This is a uh, story about a finite state machine. It's a fairly simple design, and I'm not abiding by the Mealy or the more conventions for finite state machines. So uh, this example is more of a cartoon. Also, Verilog has a special structure for introducing finite state machines. I'm not using that either. I'm just using if else. Um, I guess I could simulate it with a case as well. Mm. So this is kind of a sloppy, um, quick and dirty finite state machine. So the story is I want to have a counter and I want the output for the counter to go to some LEDs. So eight LEDs. Um, the counter is going to tick at one hertz. And the inputs for the machine uh, are going to be a clock. And then the functions I want are up, down, hold, and zero. So you can think of this as a stopwatch that goes up, a stopwatch that pauses, a stopwatch that resets, and a stopwatch that actually goes backwards in time. Now, those are four signal inputs, so I'm going to implement them with just two switches. Um, so it's a pretty simple design. Um, inside, I've got to have a module that takes my 50 megahertz system clock and slows it down to one hertz. So there's just going to be an internal counter that does that. And then um, the other module, I didn't really draw a box for it, is going to take these four switch positions. Um, so I've mapped them in my head to these four different states. So hold, count up, count down, and zero. And so inside of that, I've got uh, a series of if blocks that tick the time up, down, reset the time, or do nothing. Um, and that's going to be uh, uh, fed out via a, another 8-bit register. Um, so that's the cartoon of the design. Here's what the Verilog looks like. So uh, my top level module is called TikTok, and I've got a clock coming in, switches coming in, and LEDs coming out. Notice I'm specifying them as a bus because that's handy. Um, and then I've got two machines inside of my top level design. Uh, one of the machines is make a one hertz clock out of a 50 megahertz clock. The other machine is to implement this uh, finite state machine. So um, the finite state machine first, here it is. So I've got a clock coming in, switches coming in, LEDs coming out. I'm just using the exact same variable names. That's sloppy, but oh well. Um, so the state that I'm going to implement, the state that I'm going to be in is determined by the switches. Um, and there's no dependence on the previous state. Um, so that has implications for the sort of state machine that I'm implementing. Um, and so then it's just a simple uh, series of if-else blocks. This could also be implemented with a case statement, um, but I don't see the point of introducing that terminology now. Um, so if we have 0, 0, uh, we actually do nothing. And so that would be like just assigning the old value to the new value of the register. Um, uh, if we have 0, 1, we're going to tick up, and so we can do that by adding 1. Uh, and it's nice how the adder is encapsulated in this just plus operation that we don't have to implement an add uh, 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 in binary, although we could. Um, or, uh, if we have 1, 0 as the bit pattern, we're going to tick down. And so, again, you can imagine building this with two's complement arithmetic and subtractor and all that business, but we can hide that inside of the minus sign. And then um, if we have one, one, then we need to um, zero out the counter. And so I could just say zero, but um, I decided to write it out in binary instead. So um, let's see. Uh, we also have a clock. Um, so, so we're going to make a one hertz clock. And this is kind of an old story. So we'll have a counter. And this internal counter will be 26 bits wide, which will get us up to 67 million. And, um, and so then when this clock ticks, right, the 50 megahertz tick, um, we reset it at 50 million. And we actually set the output clock to zero then. Um, we toggle the clock from low to high when we reach 25 million. And um, if we're not at either of these breakpoints, we just tick the internal counter. So the internal counter is going to go up to 50 million and reset. You see that right here. Um, one thing that we haven't, that I, I didn't mention, 
shouldn't say we, right? It's kind of weird to have a personal relationship with someone watching a YouTube video. Um, at any rate, uh, one thing I didn't mention is uh, what happens to LEDs when we're at uh, eight ones, right? When we're at all eight ones, what happens? So um, the numbers just roll over. It's like an odometer. You know, if you think about a trip odometer in a car, when you get all nines and you drive one more mile, you get all zeros. And so that's um, that's what this will do. And so in the same way, if we're at all zeros and we subtract one, we'll actually go down to all ones. Um, so I'll show you that in the design in a minute. Um, so one, one nice thing, uh, when you implement the module, you can save space on your desktop. I mean, this is piddly, but you can save space on your desktop by getting rid of that console. And then in the design summary, if there's an error, um, it'll show up here. And, and these error messages are maybe easier than the ones below on the console. So at any rate, this synthesizes just fine. Um, there's one warning about switches being transient. Who cares? It's going to be fine. So in a minute, I'll show you the design. So here it is, and I've programmed it. This is a basis two, 250. So we're in the hold state. So now I want to count up. Notice it's about one hertz. So now I want to hold. Now I want to count down. What happens when we count down below zero? We count backwards, right? So there's rollover. Also, there's the reset state. Notice that takes uh, a second to implement. Right? It takes a second to reset because we're subject to the clock ticks. That's it.